I should be running number 427. Well, I should be riding. I should be working on my craft. I should be riding. I should be submitting my next craft. But I'm sitting home watching the doctor. Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And I'm sorry about last week. I uh, had some unexpected things come up, which uh, took priority over my podcasting. And it was a little bit chaotic, but I'm back on things this week. I'm back on my random number generator productivity. I was kind of panicky this morning. I lost a lot of time in trying to set up a wiki on my site and fighting with support. Turns out that the quote-unquote clean and easy new design for my web host hides a lot of stuff. So I lost a lot of uh, time due to that, and then finally I just started doing the random number generator, and I've gotten a lot of stuff done. And so, thanks to, uh, damn it, I can't remember anybody's names, the person who suggested I fill in already done numbers with priority things so priorities are more likely to come up as the day goes on i am doing the i should be writing show now instead of rolling again so i had a fun weekend of college visiting and roller coaster riding somewhere about halfway through the loch ness monster at bush gardens i kind of had that fearful thought of wait a minute i'm 46 why am i here and it's not a maturity thing, it's a body thing. Getting slammed around when you're not used to it is a lot easier when you're in your 20s. But uh, I managed. I did okay. We had fun. Never been there during the hollow scream time, which uh, after 6 o'clock, costumed horror people come out of the woodwork and menace the passers-by. And a lot of it's jump scares. But... Uh, the makeup's really good. And the acting's pretty good. That was my weekend. So I got a, a request for a show topic recently from Annie. One thing I've been struggling with is finding a good way to open the book with the first paragraph or so. I left the slot blank, but it feels lacking and voided when I open the doc to work on it and see it empty. So how to start a book is actually, it's challenging. Um, I think I've talked about this before, and this does have a bit of a spoiler for the Song of Ice and Fire series, but I think it's ubiquitous n enough now to where the spoilers aren't going to hurt that much. But just scooch forward a minute or two if you care. And that's uh, the interesting thing about Song of Ice and Fire series is I think the the catalyst to everything that happens in that in those books happened... 20 years or 18 years or so before the book began. And we never actually know what happens during that time. We have a lot of people's memories or assumptions, but we don't know what happens. It was shown on the TV show that most what, what people have finally figured out was probably true, which is a married prince gave a favor to a lady who was promised to somebody else and, in theory, kidnapped her and they started a war to get her back and she died. Only later do you find out that she went willingly and a child came out of that union. And all of this starts... I mean, the king died in those battles, the prince died, new people took the throne. I mean, all sorts of stuff happened. And then... All that boiling went back to a simmer, and then we got the beginning of Game of Thrones. And sometimes I sit there and wonder, like, why did he decide to start it then? Because, I mean, the story of Rhaegar Targaryen is pretty interesting, but that's the story he chose to hide. Finding the right place to start is actually quite... is, is complex. The popular way to do it now is... Uh, in the middle of action. There's a Latin term. In media res, I, be I believe it is. I'm going to read to you. Hopefully this will be count as 
fair use because I'm using it for educational purposes, but there's a new good book out from Orbit called Velocity Weapon by Megan E. O'Keefe. And I'm just going to read you the first paragraph. The first thing... First... I'm going to try to read you the first paragraph. The first thing Sanda did after being resuscitated was vomit all over herself. The second thing she did was to vomit all over again. Her body shook, trembling with the remembered deceleration of her gunship breaking apart around her, stomach roiling as the preservation foam had encased her, shoved itself down her throat and nose and any other ready orifice. Her teeth jarred together, her fingers fumbled with temporary palsy against the foam stuck to her face. There's a lot going on in that that one paragraph. There was a battle. Our protagonist barely got out alive. She's not feeling too good because of this encasement foam. It also tells us that this is science fiction, obviously. But you probably knew that from the uh, black cover with the spaceships on, on the front. She's a warrior or a soldier of some sort. But she's very vulnerable now. And we're not sure where she is. And she might not be sure either. And that's just from the first paragraph. Some first paragraphs like to take you to the end of the story and do the whole bet you wonder how I got here thing. Now that I'm bloodied, beaten up, and held at gunpoint by Brad Pitt, like Fight Club. I can't remember if, I can't remember if the book starts out that way or not. But that's how the movie starts. Um, but that's kind of a trope now. It's kind of a little bit cliche. It's been overused. But once you decide where in your story to start the book, you then can take something happening to your protagonist or your antagonist. You want to give... I'll start, I'll start over again. You want to give your people a, a reason to keep reading which means you want them to ask questions. Now, the questions I have after this first paragraph was, who was she fighting? Where is she? Why isn't there anybody medical around her to help her out? Is she on the good side or the bad side? We don't know that either. Is she going to be okay? Because she's kind of messed up after this whole thing. It's funny, when I tell of my least favorite reading ever, was when, after my reading, a whole bunch of people started asking questions, challenging some of the things I said. And I realized it was because they didn't trust me to answer them. They thought that I'd thrown this out there with no regard for backing it up. For example, in six wakes, I have six people waking up, cloned, naked, and one of them is very, very ashamed of his nudity. And one guy's like, I find this difficult to believe because if someone's been cloned multiple times and they're used to coming out of the vat naked, why would he be ashamed of his nudity? And I'm thinking, that's a really good question. Why don't you trust me to answer it? Sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent, but it's still... That whole experience very clear in my head, and I don't know if it's ever going to fade. It was very terrible. It went on from there. It got worse and worse and worse. But the thing is, you want people to be asking questions, but you want them to trust you to answer them. So where you, where you come into danger in this case is if you put too much action in there and you kill a bunch of people and your character is either sad or elated, it's hard for the reader to match those emotions since they're not emotionally connected to the character yet. There was a scene in The Office where Michael Scott thought that the most interest, most exciting thing ever to happen would be someone to pull a gun, and so every single improv piece he did started with a guy walking in with a gun. No matter what they were improv he would bring a gun. And what he's doing is he's trying to throw a bunch of action without making you care about anybody first. Now, I know what I'm talking about is very vague, because you're talking about any kind of book here. But I'm going to recommend you find, like, your three favorite books 
and read the first paragraphs and find out what they have in common. See if they each give you a character to care about or ask questions about or wonder about. Some people break these rules. China Mieville has such beautiful phrasing that he can start a book with like three pages of description of a city. That's usually frowned upon for most writers, but for China Mieville it works. Don't try to be China Mieville. Only China Mieville can be China Mieville. When I was writing book two of my uh, Shambling Guide series, I wasn't sure how much information to throw at the reader because you want people to be able to pick up the book and enjoy it if they don't happen to realize there's a book one, but you want people to, if they've read book one, you don't want them to have to go through multiple iterations of this is my life and let me recap to you. So I just read a bunch of book twos and tried to figure out what people did in the first chapters. And I kind of patterned my first chapter after that. But that's a great question. Starting a story is tough. Oh, and I'll, I haven't recommended my favorite ri fiction writing book in a while. It's Beginnings, Middles, and Ends by Nancy Cress. Uh, Nancy Cress's theory is people have a favorite part of the book they like to write. And they have a part of the book that's going to be weaker than the other two. So some people love writing beginnings and struggle with endings, etc., etc. So if you want a little bit more information on how to write, how to begin your book well, uh, check out Beginnings, Middles, and Ends by Nancy Cress. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. I just like the book that much. And that is it for me. I want to end now so I can have stuff to talk about tomorrow. This is I Should Be Writing. I am Mer Lafferty. You can get in touch with me at mightymer at gmail.com. And the website is at merverse.com. And if you want to support the Patreon, that's patreon.com slash mightymer. I want to do a shout out to new patron uh, Tarika Walton for pointing out some things that were missing in my um, information I send to patrons. So I'm going to be sending out an email today probably about everything that was, <laughs> everything I point that, that she pointed out that I had missed. So thank you very much, Tarika, for helping me fix that. And if you guys took the weekend off, I hope you're starting to sit down and get moving with the writing because you should be writing. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing theme music provided by John Anilio. You can find more about him at johnanilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License. It's on TV.